God loves you this morning. Aren't you thankful for his love today? Come on, one more time, give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. You may be seated this morning. So good to see each and every one of you in the house of God today. So thankful to, uh, to for those that are joining with us online. We have had a t fantastic uh, revival this week. Can, have we not? Amen. And can we give God praise for that? Amen. But it's not over. Amen. Revival continues today. And so I'm planning on having revival today. I've come to worship the Lord today. Uh, God has fed us all week. I want to give a scripture to you that uh, the Lord laid on my heart this morning. 
uh, that it really just speaks to where I'm at today, and I hope that you're joining with me uh, this morning. It says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Can we just praise him in this house? Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Everything that has breath, amen, should praise the Lord. This song right here, I love this song that they just sang because it has everything we need to hear as we start off this worship service this morning. God loves you today. He loves you every day, amen. And it is an honor to praise him this morning. I want our ushers to come this morning as we worship the Lord and our giving. Again, today, as every night this week, we've taken up an offering, and all of the offering, the loose offering, goes towards our evangelist uh, uh, brother Alford and um, sister Maggie and um, we th- we want to support them we want to uh, invest in their ministry we want to sow seeds into their ministry and their life and uh, you can do that this morning we have many ways to give um, of course we uh, you know we'll take it all we'll take gold jewelry uh, <laughs> it, whatever it takes amen we, we take it all but no, listen, when it comes to giving to the Lord, you can't outgive God. You just can't outgive Him. And when you sow seeds into the ministry, you got to understand you're sowing something into a ministry that's bigger than you. It's way bigger than you. And God will take that and multiply it and use it. And, and others can come to know the Lord Jesus Christ just by you simply giving. He costs money today to go up and down these roads to travel. He's all over the country. He's all over the place. And the Lord sends him. But he has to have a way to get there. And so this is a great opportunity for you to sow seeds into his ministry. Listen, he's brought us the word. He's done his job this weekend. Amen. And we give God praise for all that you have been sensitive to and brought the word of God uh, to our church, brother. Can we give him another hand this morning? Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he and his family has come to Lydia Mill this weekend. But I'm also thankful that the Holy Spirit has met us here. And many lives have been touched. I want you to know that Open Door was with us this weekend. And they were at their church this morning. Uh, But the whole time I was on the bus with them and traveling with them, they talked about how that they felt love that they've never felt before. And how that they come into the house of God and they felt something. And many of them gave their hearts to Christ. And I believe there was one young woman that was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I heard her speaking in tongues. I know she's still young in it. But uh, we heard her speak in tongues. Amen. And, and we know that God is working in her life. And, and I praise God for that. Amen. I, I, this has been my prayer that when people walk in this door that they will feel the love of God. That if any place that they could come. How many knows they should feel the love of God in God's house? Amen. Amen. And I just give God praise for that and and look forward to many other opportunities we can uh, assist and and, and, uh, just just gather the fragments. That's that's the call of God upon this church is to gather the fragments that remain, that none be lost. And and that's what we're attempting to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray over this offering. How many has a need this morning? Just raising your hand, signifying you've got a special need. It's good to see Sister Candace Bull with us. Amen. And she's recovering, and God's just moving in her life in a special way. And, and we want to continue to pray for her and, and others here this morning. We have some that are out sick today. We want to pray for them as well. Let's pray together. Father, I love you, and I thank you, God, for another opportunity to just come worship you, God, to give you the highest praise, God. There is no way, there is no way that, God, we could say anything or do anything or even give, God, to the to, to bless you back for what you've already blessed us, Lord. But, Lord, today, God, would you take a simple act of worship, a pure heart, a pure soul today, God, that just lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Would you be honored, God, by our worship today? Would you be honored by our gift? giving today as we sow a seed into the man of God. I pray that God you will continue to anoint him and his family and use them in a great and mighty way God to speak the word of truth God to those that are longing and hurting and desperate God for change. I pray God that you will continue to bless God and 
and meet every need that he has, Lord, and his family. Bless their baby boy, I pray, God. Continue to put a hedge of protection about him, God, as he grows. And, and God, I just pray for the giftedness of the Holy Spirit to continue from generation to generation, Father. To continue to share the gospel, God. The good news that God loves people and God loves you to this morning. And I pray, God, that you would continue to bless our church and anoint this service in a special way. And for the hands that have been raised in this room, for those sick in body, God, heal their body. Encourage their souls. If there's one uh, lost today, let them be saved. If there's one addicted, let them be set free, God, today. Move in this service in a great and mighty way, God. And we will give you praise and glory for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Worship the Lord as you give today. God just requires that we ask and that we seek. The Word of God tells us that we have not because we ask not. And I know sometimes in this human flesh we get tired. We feel like we can't take one more step. But I'm going to tell you, let me tell you about my Jesus and the strength that He is and how He can change your life this morning. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all this stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Well, let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way.
praise. I just feel in my spirit this morning that people need to raise their hands and testify this morning by raising your hand. Has Jesus changed your life this morning? Has he done anything in your life this morning? Who can pass it? Your burden weighed and heavy. Who could care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, He makes a way where there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. There ain't no sinner that He can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is Christians, we forget just the power in that name of Jesus and that blood that he shed on Calvary. When that blood was shed and he cried out that it is finished, that means it was he finished for eternity. He had fulfilled the law. He had fulfilled the prophecy of the law this morning. And we never should take that blood for granted this morning.
your hands all over this place. Lift your hands all over this place. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for that precious blood that you shed on Calvary. Thank you for every last drop. Lord, the Bible says that you, you shed every drop of blood to the point that water came out of your body. Thank you, Lord, for that precious blood. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus this morning? What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. You, you may give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're being seated. For just a moment. Thank you, musicians, for all that you've done this morning. Haven't they done a wonderful job this weekend? Amen. I just, I know that this is our last service, just want to express my gratitude to each of you for the inexpressible love that we have felt this weekend. I fall right in line with, with Open Door that I there's just great love that's been in this sanctuary, unity, great fellowship. I mean, I'm telling you, we've had wonderful fellowship last night. Uh, we're here till about 11.30 or 12 o'clock talking, telling different stories and just enjoying the time that we're able to have this weekend. Uh, my wife said something the other day when we left the church that we were at right before this. She says, kind of sad because we go different places and we get real well acquainted with people, get to talk to them and know them, and then all of a sudden we're gone. And sometimes we don't see those people for months and sometimes even a year at a time. Uh, we pray that we cross paths with each of you at some points in the near future, but it's been a blessing to get to know each and every one of you this weekend. I pray to get to know each and every one of you better, my wife and I do. And we do want to express our gratitude for you coming to the house of the Lord, your prayers, all of your giving this weekend. It means so much to us, everything that you've given in the offerings. Uh, we do appreciate you for coming to the house of the Lord. Appreciate your pastor, pastor's wife, for all the, uh, all the, in, the invitation to come, the fellowship, all the food that was prepared uh, last night. We appreciate all of you had a part in preparing the food. It means the world to us. Uh, it was it was good eating for us and uh, good eating for my wife and little man. Um, they need they need it. We need it, and uh, we do appreciate everything you've done for the Lord. Stand with me if you will. Um, this morning, I woke up out of bed and got up to get ready for church. And I, you know, typically don't necessarily I, I don't necessarily pick my own directions to go. I ne I never do that in fact try my best never to. I try to be led of the Holy Ghost. 
and everything. Uh, Sundays are a good time to preach messages to sinners. And I do believe that a lot of the times when sinners come, a lot of times they're going to come on Sunday mornings, even though I've seen them come in all different types of services. Uh, but this morning, the Lord specifically spoke to me to preach a message that I have never preached before. I had no notes on it this morning. I had nothing. Uh, he just gave me a passage of Scripture. I, that's If you looked and seen me sitting down uh, studying and looking for things, that's because I was trying to get my thoughts together uh, this morning. But I know the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Um, and I believe that God, specifically in this service, wants to fill people with the Holy Ghost. I don't know who you are in here if you've never received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. This morning is a morning that I know if God gives me a message to preach on it, He wants to fill people. He's capable. He, he will do it in this house this morning. I pray that you'll receive it. Uh, go with me, if you will, to 2 Kings chapter number 4. Give you a moment to turn there. They're going to also put it up on the screens. 2 Kings chapter number 4. It's where I want to read from this morning. I want to read beginning of verse number 38. One last time, if you can, if you have verse number 38, if you would just shout as loud as you can, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse number 38, the word of the Lord reads and says, And Elisha came again to Gilgal. And there was a dearth or a famine in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servants, Set on the great pot and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine. And gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. And so they poured for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said in verse 41, Then bring meal, which is flour, and cast it into the pot. And he said, Pour it out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And notice verse 39. It says, One went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine. And gathered thereof the wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them, and cut them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. And they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But verse 41 finishes the story and says, He said, Bring me meal. And cast it into the pot. He said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. Now I'm going to preach a strange title. I am a title person. Uh, the, that's how the Holy Spirit has anointed me and directed me in my years of evangelism. But the Lord spoke clearly to me getting ready this morning to preach a sermon entitled, Pots, Plates, and Pentecost. Pots, Plates, and Pentecost. I know that makes absolutely no sense right now, but if you'll just give me the next little while, I'll try my best to give it to you as the Lord's laid it in my heart this morning. Would you stretch your hands this way and ask God's blessing upon the reading of the word and preach word of God. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your wonderful presence that's been here this morning, for the anointed worship. Thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful weekend of revival. Thank you for how you've moved, how you've spoken to us. How you've touched us in these altars. God, I have felt you in these altars like a fresh wind from heaven. Lord, I'm asking you, I know that there are people here that have not received the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues. But God, I believe you've sent me here this morning to feel and to refill your people with the Holy Ghost. We need him, God. You told us it that 
after he'd come upon us, we'd receive power to be witnesses unto you. And Lord, we need that power, that anointing, and that fresh wind and infilling of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we ask you together in Jesus' name to do this. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do humbly pray. And everybody said together, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, just want to preach to us on that subject, pots, plates, and Pentecost. Now the story starts off with Elisha, the man of God. A man that had followed in the footsteps of one of the greatest prophets in all of Scripture. Elijah the Tishbite was his mentor. Uh, Elijah was a man of God, did at least 14 miracles in his ministry and life. A man that walked so close to God that at the end of his walk on earth with God, the Bible says that a heaven was opened, a chariot of fire, flaming chariot of fire with the horses of heaven came down. And took Elijah in a rapture-like experience up into glory. He never on this side of eternity experienced death. Never experienced death. A man of God, Elisha walked, poured water on his hands. Followed him everywhere he went. He was seeking for the anointing of God that had been placed on the life of Elijah. The Bible tells us right before Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind into heaven that Elisha, Elijah asked Elisha, his protege, the question, what do you want from God? What do you want from me? And he said, I want a double portion of your anointing. I want to have twice as great of an anointing as you have had on your life. He, he followed him closely. Elijah said to Elisha, he said, if you'll follow me, if you'll go where I go, and you stick close to me, if you see me when the Lord comes to take me away, then you will receive a double portion of my anointing. Uh, the Bible began to tell a story of how Elisha would follow very, very closely behind the footsteps of Elijah. They would cross over different places, going here and there. And Elijah would test Elisha. There was about four places that they would go after Elijah said this. And every time that they would reach their destination, Elijah would ask Elisha the question. He, or tell him or make a statement. He'd say, sit here. Don't, don't go any further. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further. You just wait here behind. But Elisha refused. He said, I'll go where you go. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not waiting behind. You told me if I see you when you're taken up that I will receive a double portion of your anointing. And I will not take my eyes off of you. They'd go another place. Got to their second destination. Elijah looked at Elisha. He said, stay here. I'm going another place and you just need to stay here. Eli Elijah was testing Elisha. God was testing Elisha to see just how bad he wanted a double portion of Elijah's anointing. He said, no, Elijah. I've got to go where you go. I've got to see you so that I can receive what God has placed in your life. A double portion of that on mine. They went to the third place. Elijah tested him again. And Elisha again refused. And this would be the last time that God and Elijah would test Elisha. And when they crossed over the Jordan and came to their final destination, Elijah, the, the heavens are open, the chariot of fire comes down, Elijah's taken up into heaven, and the Bible said his mantle fell off of him and fell down to where Elisha was. Elijah picked up the mantle, received a double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, went to the Jordan River, smote the Jordan River, and he said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The Bible says the Jordan River parted. And Elisha walked across on dry land. A new man. A, a, a man with a double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now in that time when Elisha was following very closely to Elijah. One of the places that they came was a place called Gilgal. A place called Gilgal. Uh, an important place all throughout the Old Testament especially. We see constant references of this place called Gilgal. Uh, the Bible tells us in verse 38 where our story starts. Notice this. And Elisha came again. 
to Gilgal. Gilgal, if you, if you study out the scripture and what the word Gilgal means, it is a place of a cutting away, a rolling away. If you recall back to Joshua and the people of God, the children of Israel, when they came into Canaan land, after they've wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, I just want to give you a little bit of a lesson, a history lesson in the Bible this morning. The Bible says that when they came and crossed over the Jordan, God parted the Jordan just like he had for Elijah and Elisha. They came across, and when they came across the Jordan, the Bible says the first thing that God asked of Joshua and the children of Israel, when they came across, they were in the land of Gilgal. And God said, I want you to circumcise the children of Israel the second time. Now circumcision in Genesis 17, God spoke to Abraham, the father of the faith. And he said, Abraham, my covenant between me and you will be circumcision. That will be the symbol of our covenant. He said, you will circumcise every child, every male child that comes out the womb on the eighth day of their life. You will circumcise them. This was uh, important to the, the Jewish history. This is important to our world today. He said, you will circumcise every man child that comes out that womb on the eighth day. And he said, that will be the covenant between me and you. And God, the, the covenant of circumcision was so important to God in those days that God spoke to Abraham and said, He said, if you do not circumcise any man, child, any great, any old man, any young man, any middle-aged, if they're not circumcised, then that man will be cut off from this people. That meant they would die because that is how important the covenant of circumcision was. Why is that? Circumcision was not just important... God knew the, the health benefits that it brought for a man or child to be circumcised. But it was not important just because of health benefits. It was important because it symbolized what Jesus was going to do to the hearts of men and women thousands of years later. Circumcision is a symbol of sanctification. Of, of God cutting away at everything in our heart that does not need to be there. That's why this took place in Gilgal. Because Gilgal means a rolling away. Or it can mean kind of a, a cutting away. And so God had brought them to this place in Joshua, in the, in the book of Joshua. When they crossed over to Canaan land. You know the first thing that we, we talk about is Jericho. And how God tore down the walls of Jericho. And how they began to bring about victory. And great things happened for the people of God. This was not the first thing that took place. The first thing that God had to do when they got on the other side, he spoke to Joshua and said, circumcise the children of Israel the second time. Because God remembered his covenant with Abraham. He said, my people have to be sanctified. If they are going to accomplish my will and do what I'm asking of them to do. Elisha knew what this place was like. Because when he was following Elijah to receive the double portion of the anointing that he received, he had to go to Gilgal. And the Bible says he came here again the second time. Here he is in Gilgal again. And the Bible tells us that there was a dearth or a famine in the land. There were, there, they, could, they weren't growing crops. They, they might not have been like the other night with our story in 1 Kings 17. They may not have been rain for a little while. Things were dry. The, the, the harvest season was not as plentiful as it had been in past years. And so they're scrambling around. They need something to eat. They need something to feed these men and women of God. The Bible says that the sons of the prophets had come to see it at the feet of Elisha, the man of God. They're looking for something. They are, they're hungry. They want to be filled. But because of this dearth or this famine in the land, they were not seeing the move of God in their life. I submit to you here tonight, here this morning, that that is where we are today. I preached it the other night. There is a dearth in the land, a famine in the land. 
People are hungry for God all over this world, all in the church. They want the Holy Ghost. They want to be filled to the very brim, with the overflowing with the Spirit of God. But where is the move of God in this day? Where is it? Where has it gone? There are people that are trying to live sanctified, trying to follow God. They want to be filled. They come to the altar, but they're not receiving the Holy Ghost. I've seen it. I've seen people beg God and beg God and beg God. But I've also seen the other side of the story. About a year and a half ago, I went to a church in Smithfield, North Carolina. God was moving in that revival. It was scheduled to go Sunday to Wednesday. We extended it into Friday. God moved Friday night in such a way I've never seen before. Wish I could tell all that happened that night. But the, the pastor said, I want to go on into next another week of revival. So we started up that Sunday morning. And the Lord spoke to me like he did this morning. And began to deal with me to preach about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And so I got up. I obeyed God like I am the this morning I preached to him about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. There was a man in that service. He'd been faithful for years in that church. He, he shouted me down all week. He was a, a humble man, a fervent man, a praying man, a, a, a very zealous man for God. He, he, I believe he was in his 40s, maybe in his 50s, and he was hungry. But he had never been filled with the Holy Ghost. Over 20 years, I believe it was, he had been seeking for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And he came down there to that altar that morning and the saints of God gathered around him I was up on that stage hooping and hollering jumping shouting running around I, the Holy Ghost moving on me the spirit of the Lord was stirring all through that congregation that morning and eventually he, he just got so carried away so deep in the spirit that the, the mo he was literally groaning and moaning out loud because he was so deep in worship to God that all of a sudden all the moans and the, and the groans turned into an utterance which I could not explain I could not fathom and he began to pray in an unknown tongue as the spirit of God gave him the utterance it's not the will of God for a saint of God to go 20 years seeking for the Holy Ghost and not being filled It makes a great testimony and a great story and it made for great victory that morning. I shouted all over that place. But God wants you to be filled as soon as He possibly can get His Spirit inside of your vessel. As soon as He can. And I believe this morning, that is why he dealt with my heart to preach this message. He wants to fill you with His Spirit. Even in times of dearth and famine, we have been like Elisha. We have come to Gilgal. That's what this weekend is about. Revival is not about shouting and hooping and hollering and having a good feeling and, and, and feeling good and walking out shouting the victory. I, and God wants us to walk out shouting the victory. Revival is about what your pastor said at the very opening prayer. It's about cutting away at things in our heart that hinder the Holy Ghost from having His way in our lives. Sometimes it's, lie, it's the very final service that God's got our heart ready to receive the Holy Ghost. That He's cut away in everything inside of us that doesn't need to be there so that He can fill us with His Spirit. So the Bible says that in the midst of a famine, they came to Gilgal, and it says, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before Him. They've come to the feet of the man of God, ready to be filled. And so Elisha, seeing the hunger in their heart, the desire and the passion, his compassion is stirred. And he wants them to be filled with the food that God has prepared for him. And so he speaks in verse 39 and says, at ver the latter part of verse 38 rather, and says... Set on the great pot and see pottage for the sons of the prophet. And verse 39 says, And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine. And he gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, 
and came and shred them into the pottage. And they knew them not. That simply means they did not know exactly what vine and what kind of fruit was on this vine. But they brought, this man brought this wild vine. Not knowing where, where, what, what it was made of, what it had in it, what it would do, what it would, what would be concocted in the pot that had been set before them. But here Elisha is. He wants them to set on the great pot, put this, these wild gourds, a lap full, his whole lap full. He's carrying all these wild gourds and they threw them in the pot expecting to be filled. Why? Why? Because the man of God is here. We know that the man of God is here, that God's going to work this thing out. But that is just like the devil. The devil right in the midst of God getting ready to fill them with his spirit and fill them with his, that, that food that he was about to prepare for them. The devil concocted a plan and here they are bringing wild gourds to lay inside of the pot that God is, has laid before them. And there comes out poison in the pot. Poison in the pot. Just like the devil. When people are hungry for God, having a move of God, God is doing something great, and God is ready to fill them to the very brim. And the devil tries to get right in the middle of the arrangements and hinder what God is trying to do. There's some of you, you wanted the baptism in the Holy Ghost this very weekend. There's some of you, for a long time, you're sitting in here this morning, you want the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and you've wanted Him for a long time. But every time you go, there's poison in the pot. The devil is there. He gets in that mind. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there he gets in that mind well don't you remember what you did a long time ago in, in your past and you can't be filled with the Holy Ghost and, and the devil get in your mind he'll say well you better not yield and speak in tongues when the, the utterance comes because you're going to be speaking a bunch of gibberish and they're going to think you're in the flesh you're not going to be in God's will you're going to blaspheme the Holy Ghost I, I've heard all that stuff poison gets in the pot and the devil tries to hinder you well, well you're getting tired these people don't want to pray all day long they won't stay here till one o'clock and they won't stay here till 2 o'clock and help you pray until you get filled with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Poison gets in the middle of the Pentecostal pot that God's trying to stir up and use to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I know because I've heard so many stories. I, I've heard, I heard a sister years ago, a powerful woman of God, one of the most powerful women I've ever known, getting an altar, be used by God, anointed by the Holy Ghost. She said, when I was seeking for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, would, or the, the devil rather, would tell me, you're going to swallow your tongue. It's kind of funny to hear it said out loud, but that's how crazy the devil is. His lies sound so convincing. Well, you're too young to receive the Holy Ghost. You don't, you're not old enough. and they, they, These people, they, they, they just think you're too young. And they're, not, they're not ready to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost. But listen to me. If you come by Gilgal, that's all that matters. If you've, if you've tried your best to live right, you went to the sanctifying place. And you said, God, cut away at everything in my heart. I don't want to cuss no more. I don't want to look at that no more. I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to go there no more. If you've come by Gilgal, the Lord can fill you with His his Holy Ghost. He'll cut away at things in that life. And if you've been walking with God and you've been talking with God and you've been trying to get closer to Him and you've been getting, the Lord's been sanctifying that heart. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will fill you. There is no questions, if, ands, or buts about it. God is ready to do it this morning. I don't feel him, Daniel. I don't feel a great wind of God blowing through this place. We don't walk by feelings. I, if I walk by feelings, and I've done it a many a times, more times than I'd like to admit. If I walk by feelings all the time, I'd be a miserable person. I'd be a miserable person. Because sometimes we don't feel good. We don't feel God. We don't feel joy. We don't feel victory. But we have victory even when we don't feel it. We have joy even when we don't sense it in that moment. We have God. God is with us. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you may not feel ready. You may not feel prepared. You may not think you're worthy. But the Lord is speaking to you from this pulpit this morning. He's ready to fill you with the power of the Holy Ghost. 
just like the devil to get right in the middle of the move of God that you're getting ready to have. That's why he does it. That's why he gets in your ear and tells you, well, you, you, gonna, you ain't going to be in the Holy Ghost. You're going to be in the flesh. and you, you better not do all that. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's gibberish. That's devil talk. I've, I've heard them say it now. People believe that. They believe tongues is a demonic language. And I do know, I know devils can speak in unknown fake tongues, a bunch of jibber jabber. But I'm telling you, there's a real tongue. It's the Holy Ghost of God. And, and I'm telling you, when he comes in that vessel, he'll pray through you. He'll fill you up. And he wants to do it. It's not crazy. It's not unbiblical. Every time, if you look in that Bible in Acts chapter 2, when they were filled with the Holy Ghost the Bible says that there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was preaching to Cornelius' house the Bible says that Peter said while I was preaching he fell on them as on us at the beginning and they all spoke in tongues. In Acts chapter 19 Paul came to Ephesus and there was 12 men in Ephesus and he said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed. And they said, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. What in the world, in plain old English, what in the world is the Holy Ghost? He said, what baptism are you baptized in? And they said, John's baptism. That meant we have repented of our sins. We went down to the river Jordan, been baptized by John, sanctified by the Holy Ghost of God, and we're ready for God to do whatever it is you're preaching to me about. He said, well, I'm going to baptize you in another baptism. He baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says that when they came up out that water, he laid his hands on them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and prophesy. He can fill every one of us. Young lady, young man, he can fill y'all with the Holy Ghost. Every person in here, he can fill you, anybody uh, up in your age. You might be 80 years old. You might be 90 years old. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost. That's what kind of experience. They said, we don't even know who the Holy Ghost is. We don't know what tongues is. We don't know what God fallen on us is. But they didn't have to know. You don't have to understand the Holy Ghost. You don't have to understand what He's capable of, what He wants to do in your life. You just have to have faith and say, I want what the Lord said I can have. There's nothing like being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a whole nother life. It's a whole nother dimension, a whole nother level. I'm glad for salvation. Salvation is all you need to get into the pearly gates. That's all you need to make it to heaven. You just need to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. But Jesus said in Luke 24 and 49, He said to His apostles and disciples, He said, He said, I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He said, y'all, y'all are saved. I, I've forgiven you. I've covered you with the blood of my cross and covered you with the blood of my Son. But now you must go into Jerusalem because you might be saved but you need the Holy Ghost to do the work that I desire for you to do I'm not going to tell you that you can't do something for God without the baptism because God wants to use you as much as he possibly can but you will never accomplish the great things that God wants you to accomplish unless you are baptized in the Holy Ghost In the Old Testament, the prophets were not baptized in the Holy Ghost. But they had the Spirit of God working in and through them. Now listen to me. They had the gifts of the Spirit in the Old Testament. 
You do not, I'm, I'm preaching Bible truth to you. You do not have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to be used in eight gifts of the Spirit. That you do not, because in the Old Testament they prophesied. In the Old Testament they had discernment of spirits. In the Old Testament they healed people. They did miracles. I could go on and on and on. All the gifts of the Spirit operated in the Old Testament. But if you want the fullness of God's move in your life, you have to have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Listen, Elijah... Elijah, as great of a man as he was, he only did 14 miracles in his entire ministry in life. 14 to 17 miracles. You mean to tell me a man that was so close to God on that he literally was walking on the earth one minute and heaven opened and a chariot of fire took him away. He only did 14 to 17 miracles. But now we come to Peter. He used to curse and swear. I talked about it the other night. He used to curse and swear. And he tried to forsake God and leave the ministry. But now he's in the upper room talking in tongues. But stands up and preaches a a gospel sermon. And 3,000 souls are saved. You mean to tell me they come out the upper room in Acts 3 and a man at the gate called Beautiful who's been paralyzed since his very birth. But Peter looks at him and says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. It wasn't Peter that was preaching. It wasn't Peter that was talking. It was the Holy Ghost through Peter. And that's why Peter could do what he did. It was the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands all over this place. Praise Him with all your heart. Stand with me all over this house. Lift your hands and praise him right now. He's in this place. He's going to fill some of you with the Holy Ghost. I see it all over some of y'all's faces. He's going to refill some of y'all with the Holy Ghost. I ain't got to preach long. I just want to follow his spirit. He's here. He wants to fill you. If you want the Holy Ghost, I can't go any further. If you want the Holy Ghost, come on musicians. Go ahead and start making your way right now. I'm not baptizing the Holy Ghost. But God's dealing with that heart of yours. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. Don't hold back. Don't wait on anybody else. If you need the baptism in the Holy Ghost, come on. Start making your way right now in this moment. I see you sister. Come on. Come on, everybody who will. Come on, that's right. Obey God. I'm not baptizing the Holy Ghost. Maybe you are baptized. You need the Holy Ghost. I said you need the Holy Ghost. He wants to feel you. Don't be afraid. You don't have to understand it. But I'm open to these altars. If you want to be filled with this power, these altars are open for you this morning. Every head bowed for just a moment. Every eye closed. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, Holy Ghost. Lord, I praise you. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed all across this place. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost... And you say, Brother Daniel, the Holy Ghost, I feel him. He's stirring me. He's dealing with me. And I want to be filled. Every head is bowed. I promise you, I'm looking around. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed right here for just this moment. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed right here for just this moment. Help me out here. Make sure your heads are bowed. Make sure your eyes are closed. I want to respect every person in this place right now. I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'd like to be. Would you just slip up your hand real fast? And throw, I see that hand. I see that hand. I see those two hands. I see these hands. I see your hand, my friend, over there on the left. 
I see y'all's hands. I see there's been at least, I know, seven or eight, I believe, that have raised their hands. I'm not filled. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask. I'm following the leadership of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask that everybody help me out for just a moment. I don't want to embarrass anybody or make them the, the, the feel like the, the spectacle of everybody's eyes in this place. So I'm just going to ask if, it ain't got to be every person in the, in, the, in the chairs, but if a big majority of you would step out and come to this altar, this needs to happen. I feel this in my spirit. This needs to happen for us to see what God wants to happen. Would you just all, if you raise your hands, just come with the rest of them. That way you're not embarrassed. That way nobody, just come on the end of this altar right now. If you raise your hands. And if you would like to be filled or refilled, I need a big portion of you to come help me out. Gather in these altars. Let's stand down here. Don't be afraid. The Lord wants to touch us. There's such a supernatural presence of God that is in this place this morning. And everybody who comes in this place, there, this altar, there's one specific thing that we need to do. We need to lift our hands and everybody in your chair, you need to lift your hands and you need to fo focus and center your mind on Jesus and we need to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That is what has to happen for people to receive the Holy Ghost. We've got to worship Him until He comes and fills them with His presence. They're getting ready to sing in about 15 seconds. Everybody right now begin to lift your hands all across this place. Persevere, stay strong, keep your eyes on the master, and worship him. It would help you so much. I don't like to do this, but I'm going to obey God. It would help some of you so much to come to this altar. Get right here in the middle of, what, of the move of God. I, am the, I, I, I'm not, I don't claim to be nothing. But God has pricked your pastor's heart to bring me in and my wife in, and I have to tell you what God tells me. There, there's some of you, if you get in this altar, God would do something in your heart that you would never believe. I feel led to tell you that. Anybody and everybody who will, we need you in this altar praying for people, laying hands on people, we're worshiping God with them. Right now, they're getting ready to sing. Everybody lift your hands and begin to pray for these and worship God. Hallelujah. Worship Him, church. Worship Him with all your heart. Lose sight of everybody else. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised.
Whatever you need is here this morning. Whatever you need, it's here this morning. He told Rika Popo, Elaba Rika.
your hands. If you need to move, lift your hands. He's here to move. Come on. Lift your hands all over this place. This is a move. This is a move. That's right, brother. This is a move. Oh, glory.
miracle in this place here this morning. Lift your hands all over this place. I can't express what I feel here this morning. The Spirit of God is moving through every chair, every aisle, through every row of chairs. He, he Through the top of this platform, in the middle of the altar, the Spirit of God is just like a wind blowing through this place. If you've been touched by God this morning, would you lift your hands all over this place? Let's just thank God for that right now. Father, we thank you. Aren't you with a grateful heart? Aren't you so thankful? Moves of God like this don't come every service. Lord, we give our gratitude to you right now. We give you praise, glory, and honor for what you have done in this house this morning. Let this river that's flowed in this place this morning, let it continue to flow. Even after this revival, Lord, let it continue to flow. In every single service, Lord, in every single meeting, Lord, everything that goes on, let us have this sweet move of your presence and spirit, Lord. Even as we travel down the road, wherever we go, God, let this river go with us that we've been in this morning. We love you, Lord. I want to give everybody an opportunity. If you, if anybody at all received the baptism in the Holy Ghost this morning and you would like to raise your hand, I want to give you that opportunity. If you felt that you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues this morning, would you lift your hand if you received the Holy Ghost this morning? I see those hands. I see that hand. Anybody else? Receive the, I see that hand. I see that hand. Receive the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues. Anybody else? I don't normally do this, but I do want to say I appreciate y'all so much. My wife and I, we love y'all. Thank you so much again, Pastor, for the opportunity. This has been a powerful move of God this morning. A powerful move of God. Give, give God a hand clap of praise as your pastor comes. mind joining us up here? This is what we do. Um, amen. We're not going to, you you get, you get have come and you brought us the word and you have ministered to us and you have worked these altars so faithfully and, and have spoken in our life. Now we want to pray a special covering over you. Amen. We, we just can't allow you to come and just let you go without a covering. And so we want to, we want to pray for them. And I, I, I truly have been touched and blessed that during this revival. God has spoken to our church. And I told the Lord today, I said, God, thank you 
by answering my prayer regarding revival. If you will remember, I said, God, I, I pray that love, love would just fill this room this weekend and, and that people would feel God's love and, and be touched by God's spirit and, and saved and filled with God's spirit. And, and that has happened. And so I give God praise. Amen. I give God praise for answering prayers. Without God's love, the Bible says we have nothing. We have nothing. And so I thank God for his love, and I thank God for you being obedient and being led by the Spirit of God. I never met him. I've never met him until he walked through the doors of this church. That's the truth, ain't it? And uh, he came highly. Um, uh, I, I had a pastor friend of mine uh, that, that told me about him, and he came highly respected. And I said, well, I, I, then we're going to get him. And God worked it out, and that's how he got here. So I praise God. and. And I thank you for your friendship that we have, uh, short friendship, but it's a lasting friendship. And we've enjoyed our time with you guys. Let's stretch your hands this way. Let's pray God's very best upon this couple. Pray for this baby boy that's coming. Amen. Have you picked out a name yet? Kai. Kai. That's right. Kai Brooks. And so we're going to continue to pray for Kai Brooks. Amen. Father, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, so much for this couple, God. You have anointed and blessed and God, we thank you, Lord, for the ministry, God, and the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God that has been shared with each and every one of us, the good news, God. And Lord, I just pray your continued blessings upon this couple. I pray, God, for a covering of protection, God. I pray for a covering of blessings, God. I pray for little Kai right now. I pray that you will continue to develop him, God, and anoint his life. And, and God, that God, this generation uh, of ministry, God, the, the generation, the mantle, God, will continue, God, even through his generation and his children's generation, God, I pray, God. Bless Sister Maggie, God, as the days are to come, God, for delivery, God, that you would keep her safe and protected, God, and you'll continue to help her to have a healthy pregnancy, God. And, and I just pray, God, for this missions trip, God, that you're sending this brother on in a few weeks or a few days, God, that you would anoint him and he goes to a foreign country and speaks to a, a different language, God, that you will continue to anoint him to, to encourage God and minister to those that are around this world, God. Lord, we just praise you. We thank you, God, for this couple, God. We ask you to surround them, bless them, meet every need that they have. And God, we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do and continue to do in their life and ministry. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We will. Um, I want to let you know that tonight we will not be live on, on Facebook tonight. Um, but we will, our staff will be taking and praying uh, tonight um, privately over the prayer requests that we have, the many needs. As you know, we've got a prayer box out uh, there in the foyer. If you have a prayer need, you want to write and put on there. If you have a prayer need that you're joining with us online, put that uh, on there. But tonight, we will be meeting privately to, to pray over these requests, but we will not have service tonight. Amen. And so, God bless you. Be safe as you travel. Uh, we look forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday. Have a blessed day today. God bless you.